Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of What You Watching right here on the Hollywood Critics Association many pages because we have this <laughs> streaming on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, uh, not Instagram yet because of their software and YouTube. So there is four ways you can be watching this show right now. And I want to introduce our panel for today. Uh, we have two brand new family members to the Hollywood Critics Association this year. Uh, and I want to first and foremost introduce the wonderful Rosa. Uh, Rosa, hello and welcome to the group and welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm very, very, very happy to be here <laughs> and nervous, but happy. Um, yeah, it's this is exciting. I'm really looking forward to this episode. Awesome. And then we also have Mr. Tom O'Brien. Hey everyone. So nice to see you all. It's nice to see it. Nice to see you too, Tom. And of course, Mr. Star Wars boy himself, <laughs> Kevin Taff. How did you know? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, so how this show works, if you're just tuning into it, uh, it, it's a very simple, very simple show. Not, not very complicated at all. Uh, basically I just keep saying what you're watching. Uh, and then we jump around to everyone telling, uh, one another what they're watching. And then we chime in if we actually seen it, if we agree, if we disagree. Uh, so to kick things off, uh, let's start with Mr. Newbie over here, Tom O'Brien, what you're watching. <laughs> right now, Scott, I'm I'm watching a, a Netflix show which is which is a perfect show for an aging Irish Catholic from Connecticut. Um, it's I'm called, from Connecticut. Yeah, yes, in Waterbury, <laughs> and, uh, and it's called Unorthodox, and um, I, it's all about an ultra orthodox um, community in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And it's based on a real story of a young teenage, a teenage woman who found herself in a very arranged marriage that she didn't want to be in. And even though her husband seemed to be a nice sort of guy, she decided to flee and went to Ber Berlin to see if she could find her estranged mother. And, uh, the rabbi does not not go like this one one bit. So he sends the husband and his kind of shady uh, cousin over to Berlin to, to bring her back. It's an, it's it's a four um, part miniseries, and it has a lot of elements to it. Uh, your heart goes out to her as she goes to a new city, doesn't know anybody except trying to find her mom. And uh, there's always these two guys on their way to to uh, grab her back, and uh, and so there's a bit of suspense. I wouldn't necessarily call it a thriller. It's much more of a character study of her. Uh, she just really wants her own life in in her own way, and uh, that that's um, uh, Shira Haas who uh, is real, she's magnificent in this. I mean, every, you, when you see her, she's diminutive in um, size, but major, major in acting talent. And um, you're, you're, you're on your edge of your seat. Is she going to be found and will she go back? So that's unorthodox. Awesome. Has anyone else seen this show? No, it's on my list, though. I keep on forgetting, and thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I actually never heard of it before, so thank you, Tom, for recommending it. <laughs> I keep, a lot of people keep on talking about it. It's only four episodes, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they're only one hour each, so you know, mm. you're done awesome. in four hours. Nice. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, thank you very much, Tom, for the first recommendation. Uh, let's go over to Rosa. Rosa, what's the first thing you're watching there? Um, yes. Uh, I've been championing this film since I first watched it last summer. Um, uh, and it's Blinded by the Light. Uh, this movie just 
spoke to me. It just got got it just got me. It gave me all the feels. It's a movie about a teenager whose life uh, suddenly changes when he discovers the music of Bruce Springsteen. Um, he the movie itself uh, it has several layers and universal themes that a lot of people can relate to. Uh, me personally, I was able to relate to the family dynamic as well as the immigrant family, and then ultimately uh, Javed, who's the main character in this movie. He's a writer, <laughs> um, and he wants to um, find his own voice. He wants to find who he is, and he tries to do it with uh, the influences he has at home with his family, but then at the same time with the environmental or the outside influences as well, which is where Bruce Springsteen comes into play. Um, lastly, the having an artist or having, uh, yeah, having an artist influence you or have an impact in your life is certainly something i'm pretty sure we can all relate to it um, whether it's a musician or a film or a book or anything of a kind uh, overall it, it, this movie is just i loved it it's a feel good movie and i highly highly i've been championing this film for everybody to watch it i just love it and adore it so hopefully it's on hbo um, if you guys want to watch it Awesome. I I have to be honest. I'm I'm also a big fan of this movie. Um, <laughs> I remember seeing it uh, at Sundance. I believe it was last year. And um, when I heard that Warner Brothers bought it, I was like, "Ooh, um, don't know if that's the right studio to be buying this movie." Uh, and I was right, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but it really is a great feel-good movie. And honestly, as someone who grew up in New Jersey and loves mm -hmm. Bruce Springsteen music, uh, yeah. hearing his music kind of get tied into a story like this is very unexpected because usually you think very blue-collar, white guy when you think Bruce Springsteen. And to yeah. kind of have this Indian kid be inspired by his music, I found it very refreshing but also it proves the point that music as a art form is universal mm -hmm. uh did kevin tom did you see this movie and what'd you think i i did see it i don't i did i liked it i don't remember it that well <laughs> and i don't know if there's like a lot happened at the time i don't know but it's right down my alley so i know i did like it but i feel like i need to watch it again and I have HBO, so I think I might. I have the time, so I can, <laughs> <You're check it. laughs> I can check it out again. But it was it was very entertaining, and I love Bruce Springsteen, so that was good. And I, like like you, it was weird, not weird, but it was interesting how they how how Bruce Springsteen's lyrics actually still fit in with this Indian kid's yeah. life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How about you, and Tom? I saw it also. Um, it's <laughs> unfortunate. Uh, it came out last summer. And there was another music yeah, big movie yeah, in England called Yesterday um, that came first and I think stole a little bit of the thunder that really deserved, that Blinded by the Light really deserved because personally, I think Blinded is a much better film than Yesterday is. And um, uh, I, I just had a, a ball at it. It was, just, it was, it, it, it was satisfying character-wise, but you're just rocking in your seat. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. So, is that a, a, a all-around recommendation for those to uh, check this out? Sounds mm -hmm. good. Yay. Yep. All right, <laughs> all right. And now moving on to uh, Kevin Taft. Besides Star Wars, what's yeah. you watching? <laughs> you know, I was gonna probably I was gonna talk about Clara originally, but I figured I would. Yeah, I was gonna say Star Wars or Clara. It's gonna I would be one of you. Two. <laughs> um. So I think I'm going to recommend it because it just came out on VOD. Um, I know not a lot of people, I don't know if the critics didn't seem to like this, but I loved it. Um, the movie's called Wendy mm -hmm. um, by the same guy who directed Beast of the Southern Wild, what, seven, eight years ago. Um, got nominated for Academy Award, yada, yada, yada. So I think people are expecting a lot from him. Very similar aesthetic, but for some reason, this movie resonated with me a lot more than Beast of the Southern Wild. Um, 
I just watched it again last night. Um, I had my best friend who we have the very similar taste in movies and we cry all at the same exact things. So I had texted him, I was like, okay, get it ready. And we literally started at the same time. And he would text me in the middle, he's like, I'm crying. At the end, he's like, I gotta wipe my tears. That was so good. But what I liked about it is that it didn't just retell the story of Peter Pan. You know, it's, it's modern day, takes place in, I guess, New Orleans. Um, and this little girl lives with her two twin brothers and her mom. Her mom owns this like ramshackle diner that's right outside a train station. And one night she's like 11, no, no, she's 11, 12, um, I guess around that age. Um, somebody appears on a train outside her door and it's Peter Pan or she thinks, or she doesn't know who it is, but so her and her brothers take off and they go on this kind of adventure to this Island and, you can see the aspects of Peter Pan in there, but they don't, they don't literally mimic it. There's not Tinkerbell. There's not, you know, the Captain Hook, as you know, Captain Hook. Um, but the whole thing is about motherhood and um, losing your childhood and accepting that childhood isn't going to last forever, but that there's still adventure beyond childhood. Ah, it just kills me. I love it. It's like a fairy tale for adults because I really think it'll speak to adults more than it will younger kids. Awesome. Uh, anyone see Wendy besides me? I did. You did? <laughs> yeah, I watched it at Sundance. Oh, oh my God, I'm going to feel so bad. Um, Rosa, I liked you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't particularly fond of it. Um, I I don't think the the to me uh, first of all I, I need to clarify that I didn't grow up with the Peter Pan story um, sure. or anything like that so I'm not a, I'm not fond of the story um, particularly but this film the narrative was like to me it was just lacking the there was just certain things that didn't work for me especially towards the end that third act did comp did not work for me um, it was just I don't know if it was awkwardly edited I. I don't know. Um, it's visually stunning. It's a gorgeous film to look at. And it certainly does take you in, and it sucks you in into that world. But to me, it didn't work. It's I wasn't really fond of it. I'm so sorry. I hate you, Rosa. <laughs> no, I don't. Sorry. No, I, don't. <laughs> um, I fall somewhere along the middle of you two. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It exists. For me um yes. and, I th and i think the reason why it exists for me is kind of a lot of the reasons that rosa pointed out is that it sort of seems kind of aimless and it doesn't really know who its audience is and i know we've seen so many different takes on a peter pan story before and as much as i like seeing the different reiterations of this um this one just like, it felt overly long, even though it really wasn't that long. Um, but again, like Rosa said, I think when you look at the score, when you look at the, the cinematography in this film, absolutely stunning score yeah. is beautiful. Mm. Um, you know, and the kids are, you know, the kids are fine. I honestly think it, it just, it, it, it feels sloppy. Like I know that this movie had a long history of like going through edits and reshoots and it was like a production nightmare. And I feel, you know, very, I shouldn't say more rarely than not, because I feel like it's the other way around. I feel like more often than not, you see those reflective in the film, like when there's like a lot of issues. And I kind of felt that way where I just felt like the story was there, but it didn't seem as linear as I wanted it to feel. I, I just I just I just felt like it was kind of sloppy and all like disjointed. Um I I get what you guys are both saying because I, I think the first time I saw it, I felt like I'm really enjoying this, but I'm not quite sure where this is going exactly. I but I, for some reason at the very end when you know they kind of I mean this isn't a surprise, go home. Um there is kind of like they kind of state the theme a little bit. Um, and that kind of got me like that's kind of solidified my love for it because of where it ends up. But I understand what you're saying. Watching it again, I feel like I caught more where I felt like it was a little bit more linear, but I totally get what you're saying. I don't think this is a movie for everybody. My roommate wasn't, he was 
like this. I think yeah. he wanted a more direct telling of Peter Pan. He wanted to see the Tinkerbell. He wanted to see this. And that's fine too. It just, it's not what it is. Yeah. But for some reason, it just, it got me, it got me in the feels. I understand why. I mean, I, 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 I watched the reaction when I was, I also saw it at Sundance and I remember like, you know, everyone, all the critics kind of bailed on the screening because everyone kind of wrote the movie off as that it was going to be bad. And I remember going in there and it was not empty, but it wasn't as full as most of the premieres are at Sundance. Yeah. And I sat there and I, I watched some people were really bored. Other people were really into it. And it's always hard to judge though at Sundance because there's so many people incorporated with the film in one of the first screenings. Right. So like, there's a lot of <clears throat> applause and a lot of cheer and a lot of laughter. And you're, you're kind of like, well, either half this audience is really <laughs> loving this and the other half isn't, or like there's a bunch of people from the film being spread out around the theater. Like it's very hard to read a room at Sundance. And I know a lot of us have talked about this before, you know, seeing a film at a film festival has a different experience than when you see it at a regular theater for sure. Yeah. Um, and, but this one, I just like, I didn't have any expectations going into it. I walked out kind of like my expectations were met but I really couldn't remember much about the movie outside of the fact that it was very beautiful to look at and the music kind of was sweeping and beautiful. That was about it. So, um, I mean, free now, maybe when it goes for free on one of the streaming services, I, again, Scott. I bought it. I paid <laughs> you 10 bought bucks. It. Oh my I God. Did. <laughs> and Rose is like, don't watch it. <laughs> it's okay we don't all have to agree that's the that, that's the beauty of being a film critic but the best part about it is is like what we're doing here is we can all share our reasons why that's true and then we could just move on and kevin will still love it and can Rosa, I point we'll out, think, yeah go for it can I point out the comment that um g who i actually work with i'll <laughs> duly note her, she says i agree with kevin i don't yep. think she's actually seen this movie but thank you g <laughs> for, <laughs> she might have seen it i don't know she'll have to tell me tomorrow at work <laughs> yeah to let you know um all right so uh for for my first pick for this um i i normally uh it's it's not hidden knowledge for anyone I'm not a big TV watcher. Uh, very, very hard for me to sit through television shows. I like movies because I like donating like anywhere from 90 minutes to two and a half hours of my life to a movie and then being done with it. Uh, TV shows require a lot more like focus and effort and time. And if I watch a television show nine times out of the 10, it's going to be a comedy of some sort uh, just because I feel like it's more mindless and episodic where I kind of can watch it as I go and not really focus on it. Uh, however, that being said, because we're in quarantine, uh, <laughs> I've been starting to watch more television and more streaming services. And one of the ones that uh, I got asked to do some interviews for was Home Before Dark, uh, which is an Apple series, which... Oh. If you guys have heard of Apple's series, they have not been exactly hitting the marks for most people. No. Most Apple programming has gotten very lukewarm reviews. And with the exception of this show, I feel like Home Before Dark has kind of like kind of kicked it up a notch for Apple. And it stars little Brooklyn Prince and uh, Jim Sturgis are the two main people in the show. And it follows this little girl who's a journalist, and uh, she 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 her her father, played by Jim Sturgis, is also a journalist, but he has a past, a very secret past, and he's trying to investigate, and he's obsessed with it, and he gets his, his daughter really really involved with this, and his daughter's name is Hildy. This show is actually loosely inspired by a true story, and uh, I'll be honest. First two episodes, I was kind of into it, and then I, but like I wasn't like I don't know if I'm gonna really, really continue watching this show. And then I watched third and fourth episode, and I was just like hooked until the very end. And like then they left it at a cliffhanger for the next season, and I'm like totally on board with this show, hundred percent. Anyone else seen this show? <laughs> I, it's on my list. Oh, there you go. Yes, I saw the trailer, and I, it was interesting to me. So I wanted. I'm glad you're saying it's good because I didn't know if I was should bother. Yeah, so that's good. But it's good to know. Yes, and yeah. and I think, um, and I will say this, and I and I, 
I'm one of the few people who wasn't blown away by Florida project. Um, like I, I, you didn't like it either. Oh, I hate, I turned it off. Really? I was like, these kids are driving me freaking Ooh. crazy. Interesting. I hated it. What did you think passion. Rosa? You like, Rock? I have not seen it. <laughs> um, what do you think? Oh, Rosa. <laughs> I, I like the Florida Project, but, but I think it's been a bit overpraised. Okay. So nice. when I watch Florida Project, you know, obviously, again, very similar to Wendy. The way that it's shot, beautiful. You have an amazing, as always, performance by uh, William Defoe in it. And, uh, you know, Brooklyn being a newcomer, first movie, I think she was like six years old when she filmed it. Pretty incredible yeah. what she was able to do with that. So I'll give give her, like, again – ton of credit just like with home before dark the movie when the movie that that show would not work if it wasn't for her so she's a star no questions asked for florida project though for me um i felt like the big issue was i'm feeling some echo do you guys hear some echo yep yeah all right hold on one second one second that gives me a chance to get more wine Oh. Ah. Oh. All right. Sorry All about right. that. Sorry about that. Nope. 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 Audio is still bad. Audio is still bad. The joys of doing of live. Yes. Hmm. Kevin, you got to the wine just in time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is it sound better now? Yes. I don't okay. hear it. You're yeah. good. Okay, cool. I don't hear an echo either. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but what I was saying about the Florida Project is that, you know, you have those elements that I feel like are really good. But to me, they're, it, it's very A24 in, in which the mother character is based. I feel like there's just like this whole series of like, I don't know, low income white girls in movies and like the way she was talking and the way she was acting. It just, it just seemed, I mean, I know it's real life. I understand that, but like, it just, it felt like something that I seen so much before. And so much of the focus was on the mom's character that it really just took me out of the film. And Kevin, to kind of your point, like those kids at certain times, I'm I'm just gonna say it. They were they were little assholes. They really oh, they were. were. They, were, they were really were. Absolutely. And, and I kind of like I I had enough of them after a while. That's why I hit stop. Yeah. So, but with this show, I mean, it really is all about you know Brooklyn and Jim Sturgis, and it's like their chemistry. And seeing this little girl kind of go up to all these adult characters and basically outsmart them really makes it worth watching because she's just so damn convincing when she does it. That's what makes it special. She's convincing. So it's not like you're watching a child act. You actually believe her in the role. And uh, I think she's going to be a, a, a star on the rise. Uh, she already is a star on the rise, but I think she's going to be a superstar by the time she's like 20, 20, 25. So, uh, right. And then we're going to go, we're going to circle right back around. Rosa, we'll go, we'll switch it up a little bit. We'll go with you. What's your second choice for what you're watching? Yes. Um, <laughs> I chose a docu-series that's available on Amazon prime. Perhaps <laughs> it's not the most appealing subject or topic. Uh, but I went with Lorena, which is a docu-series. It's just like four episodes, uh, also like an hour each. And it dives into the Lorena Bobbitt case from, I don't even know what year was this, the 90s. I just remember growing up and listening to the case and having just people talk about it and everything. So every my knowledge of the incident and the case and the trials and so on was just based on the media as well as what friends and families family members will let me know will tell me um this series dives into uh diff it dives into different layers of the case and what it does is it 
Yes, it gets uh, facts and it gets, it's all based with archival footage and pictures and documents. And they go into the case. They give you more information on the case. Um, yeah, there's some graphic images <laughs> there too, um, obviously. But for the most part, it gives you, um, it sets out the facts. It lines up all these uh the trials, the pictures, the, the the evidence, and so on and so forth, and how everything went down. And not only that, but it took a different angle that I was not expecting um, from this from this uh, documentary. What it did, it um, it gave you uh there's a whole episode just on this it gave you an insight uh how this case influenced um domestic violence and how in the future uh the police force and then the courts and everything how domestic violence in general against women how this case changed everything in the game it changed the game and not only that it also gave a glance and it gave it showcased how this case was being handled through the media and how certain aspects were not um told because for the most part they were um majority of the editors in the in the media were men so we were looking at the whole case through a male or a man gaze through their point of view and so on and so forth so i thought it was very interesting how how they they handle this whole material how they handle the whole docuseries um, it's I believe it's executive produced by um, Jordan Peele as well. So it's a a docu series that I suggest to watch. Uh, it would it doesn't take sides. That's what I also liked about this film about this docu series. It gives you the the facts, the everything. It just lays it out for you, and you get to make up your own mind whether what happened and the 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 sentences whether they were um, right or not. But this this docu series very 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 much um, surprised me because it went uh, down a road that I was not expecting it for it to go. Awesome, Tom. Did you see this one? I haven't seen this one, but it my guy. And it sounds like it has a real point to it, a real point of view, and uh, without being uh, preachy or whatever. Rosa, as you said, it seems like it's um, uh, leaving it all up to the viewer, and yeah. I, I like docs like that. Uh, I'm putting it on the list. Yay. Awesome. Uh, Kevin, did you see it? I did not. I did not um, either. No, I'll put it on my list, but yeah, <laughs> if it's only four, four episodes, I can do that. But I think yeah. w what's fascinating about uh, this series, I think this series came out almost like what? Almost a year or two ago now ago. at this point. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's so much content right, you know, right now. And uh, I think this is a very interesting time to kind of bring this up is that, uh, you know, we, we were talking a lot recently about how there's no content out there, right? Like everyone's like, there's no new movies. There's no new movies. And, and, and the reality of it is, is that there, there's a ton of movies. There's yeah. a ton of streaming shows. There's a ton of mini series. It's just stuff that like no one's talking about. And it's, it's interesting how in a time like this, where we're all kind of preoccupied with like what's going on in the real world, how few of us actually want to do a deep dive and look at stuff what's actually coming out because we posted in our group, well, uh, you know, like la a couple days ago, a list of movies that came out in the last like two months and there's like 40, 50 movies. And like the reality of it is, is that most of us have seen maybe three, four, five of those movies. Uh, so the content is there. It's just the the real difference between a studio movie again. Oh, here's my echo again. Uh, a studio movie, and then of course an independent movie. I do like that. It feels like people are going to start discovering the independent movies more now because that's kind of all that's new. Yes, aside from occasionally like the trolls and and the the waybacks and stuff of the world, but I feel like the people are focusing a little bit and discovering the indie movies a little bit more, which is, it makes me, it reminds me of like the eighties and the nineties when indie yeah. movies were a thing 
you either saw a big budget movie or you went to the indie movies, but they were a thing. They were an event in its own. I remember when like Sex, Lies and Videotape came out, it was a thing, but it was an indie movie. Yeah, and now absolutely. I feel like we're kind of discovering that again. I think that's, I kind of like that about, I mean, I don't like this whole quarantine COVID. I don't like everything that's happening, <laughs> but I like that people are starting to shift focus and they don't need Marvel. Basically. Yes, there you go. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, so Tom, what's your uh, second pitch for, uh, second pick for what you're watching? Ah, my second take. Um, I'm very much like all of you. We're movie people. And as a result, I hear about all this great stuff that's been on all year on TV that I just don't have time to see. <laughs> so as soon as quarantine came in, it's like, oh boy, I can get a chance to do this. <laughs> so uh, I, I saw two seasons of Succession. Boy, that's a head exploder. And wound up alternating it now and then with Tiger King. So my, my mind was just jello by the end of uh, end of that. So I, <laughs> I need something. Oh no, Tom, you froze. You froze. <laughs> That's I was like, what is, it? what is he going to say? There we are. Oh, there there we are. We are. Welcome <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Kept us in suspense. <laughs> it was the perfect time. My second choice is a musical comedy series called Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist. It is, it's, um, uh, it's from NBC of all places. I mean, that, that's a network that largely, um, you know, travels in, you know, hospital dramas and police procedurals, and that's their bread and butter. And this is so far out. Um, it, it's a major, major chance they're taking with it. And to my mind, it pays off. Uh, it's beautifully, beautifully done. Um, it has a very unusual premise. Uh, young girl, Zoe, who is just uh, got promoted to uh, being a supervisor at a tech company in San Francisco, uh, is having headaches. So she undergoes an MRI, and while she's listening to the music in the MRI, an earthquake occurs. After she gets out of the, after the procedure, she discovers that she has the ability to hear through song and dance the inner feelings of the people around her. No one else can see this song and dance, just Zoe, but it gives her an insight into her friends and colleagues uh, that seems uncanny to everybody. And uh, the, the um, MVP of this particular series is a woman named Mandy Moore, not the actress, the choreographer. Uh, she choreographed La La Land and has won separate Emmys for So so You Think and Dance and Dancing with the Stars. But this is the first time she's been able to apply something like this to a narrative for television and have it make sense. Um, it's beautifully cast. Um, the lead, uh, Jane Levy, is, is, has a, is enormously talented, extremely likable, and there's some real pros in the cast, including Gilmore Girls' uh, Lord Graham, taking a very interesting um, uh, take on a, on a uh, domineering boss. And as her parents, um, Oscar winner Mary Steenburgen and uh, Broadway legend Peter Gallagher. And uh, so they, we have music and dance numbers on the street in a coffee shop in the office, which is magnificent, the production design for it is magnificent. And interestingly at home um, where uh, her father Gallagher um, has a neurological ailment and he cannot speak and can only look straight ahead. So people can only guess what's on his mind, but Zoe knows what's on his mind because he, she hears and sees him get up and dance through the house the way he might have, he might have used to, and uh, it is a very and it it really affects her relationships. But every week there is something different, and it's something that it's a show that I look forward to just to raise my spirits. Awesome, Kevin, you love this show too, don't you? I do. I do. <laughs> um, I mean, I, if it's a musical, I'm in. But, yeah. but um, 
I, I, I just I agree with Tom about everything, except for one thing. I do think it's a little over choreographed. There's times where I'm like, oh, Lord, I just mm -hmm. wanted to tone it down a little bit. But at the same time, there's a couple of other numbers that I've really liked too. So it kind of depends what's going on. Um, but like the song selections are good. The cast is amazing. And so many of the cast are like Broadway people. Like they yeah. just introduced, can't remember the boss's name, the sixth floor boss. Um, oh, Ava. Uh, uh, Renee Elise Goldsberry. Yeah, she's from Hamilton. Mm -hmm. um, a guy a couple of weeks ago with curly hair, he was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the touring company, because I weirdly talked to him on the phone um, at work. Um, I don't know, I just love it, but I will say like a couple of weeks ago, and I cannot remember what the theme of the episode was, but I could not stop crying through the whole episode. It was so good. It's just so good. I want everybody to watch it. So well, thank you, Tom, for picking that up. Yes, that's a good, a good pick. I've I've actually only watched the first episode, and I half paid attention to it. And I will tell you, it was I it was when we were actually not in quarantine, and I was working, so I was only half paying attention to it. But I have Ashley sitting right next to me, and all she's doing is crying, ah, <laughs> you know, over and over again. I'm like looking, I'm like, what is going on? And I'm like sitting there, she's like, oh, this is gonna be a great show. It's gonna be a great show. And then we never watched it. Uh, so I, this is one of those shows that I'm definitely looking forward to because again, I'm a musical guy too. I love musicals. So I, I have to watch this. It's, it's next in line for me. I got, I have succession right before this, Tom, because jazz, I think is going to kill me if I don't watch succession by the time the next season rolls around. So I have to watch that show first. And then I'll I'll put Zoe next. Although now I don't know because now they have that Hollywood show that's oh, coming right. out, oh, which yeah. I'm dying to watch. And then there's this Miss America with Kate Blanchett, which is supposed to be amazing too. So I'm like, oh my god, I might have to switch some stuff up. At and least I, Miss America is only once a week. That's true. So you don't <laughs> have to like binge it. That's so true. You're, you're good there. Okay, cool. Rosa, did you did you see Zoe? Have you no, seen the show? No, I have not. No. Rosa. Um, I, I know. I'm sorry. Rosa <laughs> is like saving. She's helping save lives and protect humanity in a that hospital. That is true. That yes. is okay. True. I'm trying. And she's being like the <laughs> sweetest person on like Twitter in a world where everyone's mean spirited and like no. this person sucks. This person's white. This person's this, whatever the case may be. She's being the even tempered. Let's just celebrate our love of movies together. And I appreciate that so very much. Oh, thank so you. So she's the rock star in the hospital and also on Twitter in two different areas, completely yes. different areas. So oh. thank you, Rosa. Oh, no, thank you. But I am putting it on my list. So okay. yes. thank you for bringing it up. <laughs> uh, and how about you, Kevin? What is your uh, second pick for what you're watching? I was so torn between what I wanted to choose so, and I know I haven't told you what I've decided on. But. No, you have not. Suspense. <laughs> I know. But I think I will go, I wanted to, like, I binged watch a show. I'm going to pick Devs, D-E-V-S. I heard um, great things. Which is on FX and also Hulu. Um, I watched the first episode, and I I was kind of like, huh. But so I wasn't sure, and I forgot about it. And one day, I'm like, eh, I should probably just pick it up again. <laughs> and then I was like, Psh, blew through it. Um, it's this weird, it's by Alex Garland, who did Annihilation and Ex Machina. Mm -hmm. So he has a very specific style. Of course, it's very slow and very paced, very specifically. I'll say that. Um, but, I, but I'm a fan of that, so it's fine. Um, but it's <laughs> about this tech company, another tech company in San Francisco, um, that these people work at and you focus on this girl and her boyfriend who both work there. He gets a promotion and he gets into a special area of this crazy tech company that's just gorgeous and it's in the woods and it's it's weird. But anyway, the where he gets to go is a special building all by itself. Oh, there he is. There's um, Offerman, Nick Offerman. He's yeah. the he's the guy who runs the tech company. Oh, look, he looks like a halo. That's, <laughs> that's telling. That's telling. Um, but uh, this guy goes there and he is told minor stuff, but it's all kind of fascinating because the set design is amazing. Um, and you never really know what happens, but in the first episode, something tragic happens and it kind of starts a chain of events. Um, so that's a, kind of all I can tell you, but 
it's it does not go where you think it's going to go, and it gets weirder and weirder. And it has to do with realities and what we can do with technology and what we shouldn't be doing with technology. I just found it really fascinating. It's not the happiest show, but I was like every week I was like, okay, well now it's going to happen. What's going to happen? And now it's already done, so you can kind of binge it. Okay. And Nick Ooh. Offerman is great. He usually doesn't play serious roles like this. He's always that's kind of snarky, sarcastic, real dry. And he's kind of dry in this too, but he's a serious dry and not a funny dry. Uh, but he's really good. There's, in fact, there's one episode where it's just really talking between f two different couples of characters. It's almost like a play. And it's literally, I was, it was compelling from start to finish. It's so good. Wow. Mm. I've anyone else seen this? Nope. I'm going to go nope. with a nope around the room. <laughs> but I have to say the combination of Alex Garland and uh, Nick Offerman. I'm right. And yeah. Allison Pill is in it too. And she's, oh. she's in something else right now too. Um, but she's, she's really interesting because she does not play her normal character. She's a little bizarre and it took me a while to get used to her because it was freaking me out a little bit because she's very like, I don't know. I can't even describe it. But by the end of it, I was like really into it. I like it. Awesome. Um, I am looking forward to eventually, and why eventually, <laughs> I mean like three, four Never. years from now, yeah. uh, watching this uh, sometime when I'm like, oh yeah, that was a show I should have watched. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> After the series finale. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be it'll be I, I mean these these studios are probably like loving though the 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 views that all these shows are getting because like again everyone's sitting at home and I mean yeah. I I brought this up almost like at every show that I've done so far for this network but like legit like Netflix numbers are like insane right now. They're like the only stock that has not dipped at all. Like, Which is weird because I haven't watched anything on Netflix in weeks. I keep on going to Hulu and Amazon. But everyone because of Tiger King. No, and, I did watch that. Yeah, and then what's the other one? Love is Blind. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of other shows. The movies, again, we're back to the movies not drawing any attraction to anything. Uh, you know, like no one watched Love, Wedding, Repeat. I no one watched that. Yeah. I mean, there was a couple other ones that came out. There was Uncorked with uh, Mamadou. Mm -hmm. uh, that, I don't feel like anyone watched it, but like, I, I think it's the reality series. Everyone's looking for something dumb and mindless right and mindless. now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I will say that that movie with Elle Fanning and what's his face? Oh, that was great. It was so good, right? That was great. Yes. Really, really good. All I the bright places. The yes. All the so bright places. Good. Yeah. And that was by the guy who did uh, Hearts Beat Loud. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. It, it, that was a great movie, and again, a little bit out of that guy's wheelhouse. Yeah. Uh, Brett Haley yeah. was his, the director's name. Mm. Yeah, I, I was a big fan of that movie. Very depressing. It was super it, depressing. <laughs> super depressing, but it was really, really great. Probably one of the best movies since we're not going to get many mainstream movies. I think one of the best, like, bigger movies that I've yeah. seen that have been talked about this year. And that would have been. Back in the 80s and 90s, that would have been a movie to see. That would have yeah, been the John yeah. Hughes movie that nobody goes to anymore, which is right. sad. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so for my second pick, um, you know, I, I'm going to go something along the lines of a movie that I love, and uh, it's it's on Vudu. If you if you haven't had a chance to see this in many 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 years. Uh, but it's something that I love very deeply and that is very fitting to this time. And that of course is blast from the past. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a blast from the past. Thanks, That's guys. a blast from the past. Very <laughs> much so. And I, I have to say, um, it's kind of funny with how many people have not left their houses at all in like the past like month and a half how this movie has come into my memory multiple <laughs> multiple times to the point where like i actually had to purchase it on voodoo uh <laughs> because i was like this is kind of fitting for the time that we're in right now um but i i i forgot you know we were just talking kevin about like 
romantic comedies and movies that I used to love going to the movie theater to see. And this is another one where it just, mm -hmm. it's, it's character driven, cutesy, uh, you know, the leads just have that perfect chemistry. It's a weird enough story, but like it works and it's a movie that you'll never see made in this day anymore, unless right. it's on Netflix, unless it's on yeah. Netflix. <laughs> um, but it's a, it's a throwback. Sissy Spacek, Alicia Silverstone, Brendan Fraser, all, all, all terrific. A Dave Foley from the Kids in the Hall is in it as well as as uh, Alicia Silverstone's. Uh, I think it's like his gay, her, her gay brother. Uh, just he's really funny in this, and uh, of course Christopher Walken. Who can forget Christopher Walken? Mm -hmm. uh, he, he's great in it as well. Um, I, I, I'm 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 a sucker. I'm I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm a sucker for feel good movies. I'm a sucker for uh, sweet fish out of water movies. And this movie does it for me every single time I watch it, no matter how old it is or how cheesy it is. And that whole uh, leave my elevator alone sequence where it comes out of the ground. St still funny. Still funny after all these years. <laughs> Kevin, do you disagree? Do you not like Flash of the Past? I actually don't. Rem <laughs> I remember I saw it at the theater, but I don't know if I liked it or not. Okay. <laughs> I know who's in it when you said it. I'm like, oh, right. But when yeah. you just said the elevator sequence, I'm like, no, no, no. No, did you did you see it, Tom? No, no, it it somehow <laughs> always eluded me, but uh, it does sound perfect for this time. Yeah, well, I mean, it, the, the idea. I don't know if since you guys don't know what it's about, so it's about a family. I think it's either in the fifties or the sixties, and they they think like there's a bomb knife that's going to be dropped on their you know on on the U.S. territory, so they have an underground bunker. And they live in this underground bunker for like 40 years. And then the son one day hears a noise upstairs and because they're rebuilding on top of this old property. And he's like, I want to go see what's up there. And they, there's an elevator that obviously used to go up to the house. And now the elevator goes up to like this little, like, I think it's like this bar, this like gang, like some sort of like, rundown bar and he comes out into this this bar and then he sees all these people and he's like he doesn't know how to interact with anyone so i, I mean in a comedic way it reminds ha reminds me of how we're all going to act when we actually go back out <laughs> and we're like what's this the sky is blue the sky is blue you know like and like you go into the movie theater again for the first time in a couple of years or a comic book shop or wherever the hell you go into um, that, that's the reason why I was thinking about it because I just feel like everyone's so secluded and like in their own little bunkers in their house that yeah. very few people are actually going to the outside world. Yeah. So it I recommend like, it. Oh, it sounds like a comedy <laughs> version of 10 Cloverfield Lane. Right. <laughs> very yes, true. Very, very true. Very true. Um, how about you, Rosie? You didn't see it either. I'm going to guess. No, I haven't. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, I'm one of the few people who gets out. So, I think <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> all right. So, um, so last week we did a poll. We do it we, every every week on this show. We do a poll, and last week's poll, I already answered this question, but I'm curious to hear what your takes are. Uh, we said, "What is your favorite Netflix movie?" My favorite Netflix movie is "Set It Up." Uh, with Zoe Deutsch. Oh, and, Zoe. Yeah, yeah. I love that movie. Uh, I'm just curious if everyone could just go around. We'll start with you, Rosa. What's oh, your wow. favorite what's your what's your favorite Netflix movie? Oh my gosh. Favorite Netflix movie. Um oh. I don't know. I'll probably have to pass. I need to think about it. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll come back to you. We'll come back to you. Thank think you. about it. Do a Wikipedia search real quick. Yes. <laughs> All right. How about, uh, Tom, you want to go? Sure. I mean, I'm, it, 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 we previously mentioned, I'm one of those folks who go to the reality shows. So except if it's um, something in the theaters that has gotten good reviews briefly, you know, like Marriage Story or The Irishman or something like that, I tend not to watch the movies. So I got nothing. Sorry. <laughs> Wow. Okay. Wow. Oh. All right. How about you, Kevin? I'm going to go back to kind of when they started really doing event movies. 
And I'm going to say this because I know they're like, yeah, everybody's seen it. But I, you know, we as critics see it before it becomes popular. I like two. You're going to laugh at one of them, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought Bird Box was amazing. I thought it was great. Mm. I saw it at, the, at a screening room, so I thought I saw it on the big screen. I thought it was exciting. I thought Sandra Bullock was great. I, I was totally into it. Um, but I also liked Mowgli. I think I, it's no, way I, like, I, I love mm. Mowgli. I saw right? that at the Netflix screening room. Me too. And I was like, this is needs to be on the big screen. Way better than Jungle Book. Yes. Way better than Jungle Book. I agree. And I really wish people would see it, but when I mention it, they're like, man. I'm like, no, no, no. You really need to watch Mowgli. It's really good. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I think that's a great pick, and I mean it's it's a movie that you know again this was another dump. I think one was Warner Brothers, right? Dumped it on their lap, and yep. um you know they didn't know what to do with it. Um, and I gotta say, Andy Circus has gotten the shit out of the stick with directing so far. Right, yeah. he really has. And I mean, I I know people are like all excited about this Venom news, but like it's like, did you not see the first Venom movie? Because like I cannot get excited for Venom two right now. I have to say. <laughs> It took me forever to see Venom because everybody's like, it's terrible. And I, well, I saw it in like the 4D seats. So, you know, it was moving me around and throwing things in my face. Yeah. I was super <laughs> entertained by it. I was like, why did people hate this? I thought it was a blast. And maybe it's because I didn't have to review it. I was just going with my friend. We paid, accidentally paid $30 a piece because we didn't realize it was in 4D. Wow. But I Ooh. thought it was great. Yeah, it was $29.99. Thirty bucks to see Venom and still a good review. I okay. I thought it was oh, fun. Holy crap! I was like giggling and laughing, and it was like I don't know. I liked it. Wow. I don't know why everybody didn't like it. I don't get it. I'm uh, right there with Kevin. I enjoyed it too. Did you really? Yeah. 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 I made up for Wendy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. No, I thought it was. I had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. 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 It was just enjoyable. Yeah. No. I so agree. what do you what do you guys think the poll question should be for this week? I know yeah. I'm just throwing this on all of you guys, but I, I'm just wondering yeah. if anyone has a good topic for a poll. Hmm. What will be the first movie we'll actually get to see in the theaters that's new? That's a good poll question. Yeah. We'll run with that. Um all right. Let's let's go before we end this show, let's go around and actually do our votes on what we think is going to be the first movie. Mm. Uh, um, I, I suspect that Tenet is probably going to move. Yes. I agree. Yeah. So my, th- my quiet place part two. Quiet Could place be. part two. Okay. Which is weird because that was kind of the next movie that was coming out when this <laughs> yeah. whole thing happened. Mm-hmm. And I, th- I think it's set now for Labor Day, which might be doable. Yeah, I, I feel like the summer's blown. Yeah. yeah. And I, and until like we can have a mass people going to a movie, they can let a couple mm-hmm. people in. They're not going to release a big movie because they won't make any money. But I agree. I think Quiet Place 2. What I find odd is that they're doing a Quiet Place 2, The Conjuring. Yes. And then what's the third one? A like Halloween, three- not the Halloween one, but the one, the Saw movie. No, there's another one. There's, there's a, a third th- horror movie in September. Um, oh, oh, Candyman, Candyman. 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 Like, yeah. They're gonna just eat each other. Yeah, it's. I mean, that's let, really bad. That's granted, really the bad. only thing—if they're the only thing out—everybody's gonna go see them, which is great. Yeah. Again, it's gonna like the '80s again. The '80s. I used to. I used to cut out the ads in the paper and put my ticket stubs, and I still have my little, you know, <laughs> photo albums. And I look at them, and it was like, you look at the summer. It's like these movies would last the whole summer yeah. because there wasn't. Yeah. 8,000 movies out there was like a handful and everybody got to see him. You would go more than once. I saw aliens like 10 times, you know, but now mm-hmm. it's like, you have to see him really quick. Cause there's in next week, there's another yeah. one. Cool. Yeah. And I, I kind of like that. Maybe people are pulling back a little bit. I hope so. I mean, it, it, from, from our standpoint, from like critics and as a just general movie lover, I hope we can get back to the old days where like, there's maybe like one or two, movies released each week and then maybe like one or two indie films which i all already think is too much yeah but like not this like there was periods of time throughout the summer in the last couple of years where there was like five or six movies that came out on one weekend oh i remember and, and, yeah yeah and it's like you cannot watch this many movies and like it's destined that at least two or three of these are gonna bomb horribly right mm-hmm. it's like a demolition derby 
Yeah. And we get to see them because we get to see them for free, but people have to pay. They're going to pick and choose. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So it's like, you're, you're going to, somebody's going to lose. Yeah. So maybe don't spend your money making a movie, maybe cut back and focus on a couple. Yeah. My money on though, for the first movie out, out is it, it, I'm, I'm split between two. I think it's either going to be Mulan or uh wonder woman. Oh, I, Mulan. I think it's going to be one of those two, because I think, I mean, knowing Disney, they, you know, big studio, of course, they want to be the first people out of the gate. Of so course. like, that's what my gut is telling me Mulan, but I know mm. like the hype train around like wonder woman is like so strong and I think like people would actually, I don't know, like even outside of their comfort zone a little bit to go see a movie like that. I agree. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh, Rosa, what's your pick? Uh, a Quiet Place too, as well. Uh, I think that one would be the first one to come out. And I was able to think about my Netflix film. <laughs> yeah, go for it. Um, I very, very much enjoy The Two Popes. Uh, it was a film that I was not expecting to oh. like, and I was not expecting it to be what it was. <laughs> so, yeah, The Two Popes. But, no, for the poll, I would say A Quiet Place too. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. so... Uh, Oh, go go ahead, Tom. If, if, if those are eligible, um, yeah, then I'd say the Irishman. The Irishman, yeah, those really, are, yeah, huh. really. That I remember. saw it with Scott. We were yeah, the same we, it together. was like literally we were like at the, it was like the HCA screening. I swear we had like two <laughs> rows of people, uh-huh. and I was like two two drinks in when it started. So <laughs> yeah, after three and a half hours, I was like, oh, <laughs> what is it ending? What is an ending? Um, I don't know that movie. I, I I have such mixed feelings on that movie. Like part of me really loves some of the brilliance in it, but my God, like someone take a scissor to some of it. Someone take a scissor to some. Or just make it a mini series. Yes, or just make it a mini series. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so we got to end this episode. So what we do just to close out is basically we'll go around the room. We'll start with Kevin. Uh, you just basically say where everyone can find you. <laughs> And uh, that's it. Uh, and then we'll we'll end it. And then Rosa could be like, she could take a deep breath and say, oh, I did it. I did it. It's it's over. <laughs> she was great. You did a good job. <laughs> Everyone had fun. We got to have some interaction for an hour. It's all yeah. worth it in the end. So Kevin, where can people find you? Well, I'm not on Twitter. Well, I am on Twitter, but I don't use it for <laughs> anything other than yelling at people. But um, you either I do have a Facebook page that's a writer, it's like a my writing page. So it's Kevin B. Taft, writer, film reviewer. I have no idea how to tell people to find it. Oh, it's Writer Guy LA. Oh, it's Writer Guy LA. Um, and then I have Instagram, which I do post some like links to reviews and stuff like that. And that's Syros, S Y R O S 93. All right, cool. All right, Tom, where can people find you? You can find me on, on uh, Twitter at Thomas E. O'Brien, and you can find my various writings at um, for podcasts uh, at um, Next Best Picture, and for industry articles at Gold Derby, and my own reviews at Exact Change Today. Awesome. Thank you very much, Tom. And Rosa, where can we find you? <laughs> yes, I'm on uh, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Rosa's Reviews. And my work can be found at rosasreviews.net. Awesome. Oh, can I say, Scott, can I add? I actually write for Edge Media Network. So you can find my reviews there. Yeah, that's the reason why he has Edge in his name title. Yeah, <laughs> Edge, Edge Media Network. You can find uh, me there. Awesome. Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the other Scott M. Uh, occasionally, uh, I'll, I'll post some stuff that we live entertainment. It used to be very, very regularly, but, uh, not (laughs) since quarantine, I haven't felt very motivated, but, uh, there is going to be a bunch of articles, uh, up on, uh, home before dark. So you should definitely check it out this week because I'll have an interview with John M. Chu over there and a couple other things. So, uh, look forward to posting that, um, and uh, talking to everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, I thought it was a fun show. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Uh, Rosa, you did fine. Come on. You did thank a good you. job. Come on. <laughs> I know you were nervous. Tom, it was great to know. Thank you for your insight, Kevin. Great to always see you and, and interact with you too. I mean, I mean, you know, I miss you, Kevin. I can't wait to see the other two of you in person, hopefully sometime soon. 
Yes. Miss you too, Scott. Cool. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> no this, problem. This was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. All right. Well, have a good night. And uh, uh, everyone, just share this video. Uh, let us know in the comments what you thought of it. Did you like this episode? And uh, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye. <laughs>